workers and peasant state. I thought of East Germany as my country. I definitely felt at home there. Actually, even today, I still remain an East German. By now, Marie-Louise was bringing up a family. She felt part of the appeal of East Germany lay in its support for women, especially mothers. She liked the emphasis on childcare facilities, on women's economic independence and professional opportunities. Women had many rights there. Being a woman in East Germany was good. I have good memories. It was easier than today, for example. You had the certainty that even if you were a single mother, you would never have ended up sitting in a flat without heating or worrying about your electricity bills. We felt secure and looked after. East Germany's idea of looking after its citizens also involved spying on them. No act was too intimate to be observed, and no other country in history has spied on its citizens as East Germany has, with one in six of its population informing on the rest. High up on the watch list of the state's enemies was the emerging punk rock movement. All I wanted was to have a bit of fun, but the state obviously saw it differently. We were criminalized, we were politicized. Chaos was the lead singer in a punk rock band called Wutenfall, meaning fit of rage. His best friend, Zappa, was the bass guitarist. What Chaos didn't know was that his best friend was a Stasi informer. My code name was Captain. They gave me a phone number, and when I called, I was to say Captain speaking. Zappa had succumbed to persistent Stasi pressure for information about the punks he knew, and signed an agreement with the secret police. The Stasi dictated to me a two-page text full of that gibberish, saying, I swear not to undertake anything against socialism and I will work with the Ministry of State Security. I simply thought that I'd sign it and then they'd let me go and I'd be done with it. But they had that lousy signature of mine. So they continued to approach me and say, you've signed it, so now you can tell us when the concerts are. And I had to sit around at the Stasi building for hours and hours. I said, OK, I will inform you when the concerts take place. I didn't expect it to be so drastic for me. By the end, there were nine informers set on me. They would pause. In return, I had to swear that I would vote in the next elections. Chaos only found out about his best friend's treachery after the wall came down, when he read his Stasi file. I felt great disappointment at my friend's behavior, especially because of the breach of trust. It was a mistake. It was a horrible year. I was at the mercy of the Stasi. Heidi Krieger's life was also dramatically affected by the Stasi. Heidi was one of communism's star athletes. Here she is seen winning gold in the shot at the European Championships in 1986. I have... I loved being a sporting champion for East Germany. I liked representing my country abroad. 
in mein kleinbürgerlichen Denken. Simply because my narrow-mindedness would make me believe, with our achievements we strengthen the socialist republic. Die sozialistische Republik. But Heidi paid a heavy price for her sporting success. Unwittingly, Heidi was one of 10,000 East German athletes who were part of a Stasi-run doping program. At one point, shortly after I'd turned 16, the coach suddenly started giving me packs of pills. He would tell me, these are to help you, everyone takes them. You'll handle the training program better, you won't get ill, and if you're injured, you'll recover more quickly. I trusted him and started taking those pills. There are teenagers whose sexuality hasn't been fixed yet during adolescence, and probably I was in that situation. I was neither fish nor fowl. In that period, they gave me those pills. Because of the pills, my balance switched over to the masculine side. Massive doses of anabolic steroids over several years changed Heidi's body forever. I realized they'd made a lab rat out of me because they saw my potential. East Germany has taken my life away from me and without asking. I wasn't allowed to decide for myself what I wanted to become. The effects of the doping system finally forced Heidi to undergo a sex change operation. And today, Heidi is called Andreas. Heidi still exists. I'm still a bit Heidi. That is my life. I used to be a woman and I'll probably always remain a woman up to a certain extent. The man ultimately in charge of East Germany's doping program was Stasi leader Erik Milka, filmed here on a hunt. This is the Schorfheider. The Kaiser hunted here. Nazi leaders hunted here. And hunting here was a way of life for some Politburo members, a time when important business was done. We usually went hunting on Tuesdays after the Politburo meeting. Milka was an enthusiastic but inaccurate hunter. Milka had specific ideas about hunting because he wasn't a very good shot. The forester who went with him had to intervene and shoot the prey to try and make him look successful, at least once during the hunt. Stasi officer Bernd Bruckner was party leader Erik Honecker's bodyguard. His boss was addicted to hunting. Auch hier war er. Honecker was determined. It might have rained cats and dogs or even snowed and he would still want to go hunting with his fur hat on. Animals had to be imported from other Eastern Bloc countries like Hungary because they'd killed so many. They overdid it. From time to time they didn't respect the hunting restrictions on certain game. They shot everything. That was too much. 